Let's be honest. Have you ever looked at the calories on food and thought to yourself, oh, I'll work those off? Well, it may surprise you to know that that is not as easy as it sounds. Grab a seat, or maybe some weights, because we're about to talk about nutrition and exercise. Junk food is tempting, and understandably so. It's delicious. When there's an extra cheesy pepperoni pizza staring you in the face, it can be so hard to say no. But maybe it would be a little easier if you knew that that one piece of pizza contains about 450 calories. In order to burn those off, you'd have to run for about 43 minutes. Now, ask yourself this. When is the last time you had just one slice of pizza? What about desserts? A moist, soft chocolate fudge cake can make almost any bad situation better, but it can bring on some serious problems of its own. Just one piece of cake can contain a whopping 1,700 calories. That's almost the amount of calories an average woman should consume in an entire day. And burning off that piece of cake requires cardio exercise for 240 minutes. That's four hours. And exercising for that long certainly isn't a piece of cake. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Of course dinners and desserts have such high calorie counts. But it is known that most adults are snackers. Throughout the day, we are munching and sipping on foods and drinks that don't seem like they do much harm on their own, but they add up. Are you a coffee drinker by any chance? Well, one medium mocha coffee drink contains about 290 calories, which would take 53 minutes to walk off. A chili hot dog from your local hot dog stand contains 296 calories, and to burn that off, you would need to hike for an hour. Before you order that McDonald's Big Mac burger, just know that it contains 490 calories, and you will need an hour of weightlifting to burn that off. <laughs> oh, and if you're getting the combo meal with a fry and soda, you're looking at around two hours of cardio just to offset the caloric cost of that single fast food meal. It would be easy to go on and on in this fashion, listing off foods and explaining the exercise you'd need to offset the calories, but the point is clear. It is incredibly easy to overeat. Food is fuel for our bodies. It doesn't matter if it's sweet and delicious or if it tastes bland. Our bodies break down the food and use it to produce energy so that they can function properly. If we overeat, we damage our bodies. On the short term, we become lethargic and sluggish, and we're not able to do our jobs properly. But over time, overeating can lead to massive health complications, and this is surely no surprise. But what does tend to surprise people is the realization that they are overeating. One soda doesn't seem like much, but when you realize how much time you spend not moving, you begin to understand that a single soda carries a bit more risk. We have to be careful not to overcorrect for these bad eating habits, though. Undereating causes us to deprive our bodies of the energy we need. This too can lead to extremely dangerous consequences. People who are malnutritioned are more prone to illness, as their bodies do not have the energy required to maintain a functional immune system. And their bodies are more susceptible to injury, as their muscles deteriorate over time as their bodies try to get the energy they need. All of this is to say, balance is key. Doctors don't just make up those recommended caloric intakes we hear about. It's science. But in most cases, we only ever hear about average figures. Your personal needs may be different from the recommended averages for a number of reasons. If your job requires you to be more active, you may have a higher recommended caloric intake. On the other hand, if your job has you sitting at a desk recording a narration, Perhaps you should reconsider that extra mocha coffee in the morning, even if it does sound so, so good.